This show is now listener supported at patreon.com forward slash Cameron underscore Adair. If you listen to the show or have been since 2015 when we started, you can help it grow by pledging a dollar or more per episode. You can also support the show by leaving a review on iTunes. Links to both of these are in the description of every show. There's also a link in there to leave us a message. This is the Cameron Adair podcast with me, Cameron Adair. This is episode 16. Today on the show is Dana Everett. Dana goes by Mega and is a music producer. His music appears on shows like Vanderpump Rules, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Jersey Shore, Road Rules, Bad Girls Club, trailers for Spider-Man, Wall Street 2, Get Rich or Die Trying, Budweiser commercials, Nike commercials, Adidas, etc. I caught up with Mega at my studio in Echo Park. We talked about Hollywood, his career in sync licensing, movies, raising his five kids, race, and Minnesota, where he's from. Here's Mega. How's Hollywood? How's everything going over at the studio? Oh, man, trashy. It's trash. It's just trash. <laughs> that's all. That's the, the best word. I wish you wouldn't move that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's nice. Thanks. Yeah. Because the guy that uh the guy that has your old room, he's uh it's like a bunch of crackheads living there now. Oh my god. Yeah. So it's crazy, man. I put out a crackhead a day, man. Damn. Straight up. <laughs> like it's tough. <laughs> I remember I met the owner the, who owns the building because yeah. I had to settle like 120 bucks or something because he they messed it up and he's he's probably in his 70s. And yeah, he just Maddie. owns. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He just probably he owns a ton of property. Yeah, rich as fuck for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, real estate. Yeah, that's a real estate's big out here. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, it's Hollywood especially. He's got like 67 buildings in Hollywood. It's ridiculous, man. If you need a cheap studio, it kind of helped start me off. When I moved here, I needed something. Just a little cheap, little something, yeah. Yeah, sounds like it's the same. Or yeah, no, it's worse now, dog. Worse, fuck. Yeah, it's like, it's definitely not worth what I'm paying. You know, nobody's yeah. paying the rent and shit, so it's all ridiculous. It's crazy, man. Do you have any plans to get out of there? Or? Yeah, actually, that's what I'm working on right now, man. Um... While I was out here, I was going to stop by and check out another spot. Um, it's this other, it's this big ass spot. It's like 30, 3,400 square feet or something like that. So it's like, it's crazy, but it's the same exact price as I'm paying over there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That sounds nice. Yeah, it's super dope. It's Where super is dope. it? Uh, it's like downtown LA. Like, uh, I, I can't remember the, not Griffith. Uh, it's like, it's the Arts District. Yeah. Somewhere down there. Like by uh, Japantown, kind of? Yeah. yeah or yeah, Little yeah. Tokyo? Yeah. Arts yeah. District. That's a cool area. Yeah. Hopefully they get it together, though. Yeah. Or it's just a nice... I haven't seen it yet, so I was going to see it. Well, you're killing it at that studio. You're the king of trying, Hollywood, man. Trying. Nah, man. I hate that. It's like being the king of the roaches. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, Master Splinter. Like, nah, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, man. It's yeah. cool. People cool, yeah. though. You know, I met some cool people over there, but I don't You're know, being man. modest. Nah, man. <laughs> nah, I don't like that, man. <laughs> it was a, definitely a shit show. I don't know how you can stomach it being in Hollywood like, every day. Yeah. I it's mean, like you're living on the Vegas Strip or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get, it gets serious, man. I just get, t- I get tired of the tourists. <laughs> Walking past this guy, I was walking with my kids. I uh, pick them up from school and I walk them home. So this guy come, he come flying down the street on a bike, and, you know. And uh, you know, I got four boys, so they're in the line in front of me because I make them walk a single file line because otherwise we'll take up the whole sidewalk and shit. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you got that in order. It's a good system. <laughs> so, so you know, we walk single file down uh, down Hollywood. Uh-huh. So you see my first kid, he's dodging the guy. And he jumps out the way. And then my other kid was like, shoo, shoo. he jumps out the way. And then my, my third kid, the baby, he's four. He he jumps out the way. And then my fourth, 
my the, the seven year old, we both look up at the same time. Like it's going so fast, and he hits my kid like doom, and he didn't even look back. He's just like, get out the way. I was like, what the fuck? Damn. <laughs> I was like, yo, what the? It's yo, a, it was a moped. Yo, nah, he was on a, a mountain bike with the big fat tires. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so it had every song like desert and, bikes. So the 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 handlebar hit my son in the shoulder. It was like, like you know, hit him super crazy hard. And then he, he's just like, get out the way. He didn't even look back. I was like, what? So it Damn. took everything not in me to not chase the dude down. Yeah. <laughs> like, no kidding. <laughs> it's like, yo, if my babies weren't standing here, then it would have been like, it would have been a, a melee. Straight up. A scrim. <laughs> melee. <laughs> I would have been going to jail for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that shit happened. Yeah, man, it was weird. I lost my temper out of... I had a parking officer the other day. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I mean, all he said was fuck you, but for like 20 minutes after, I was like, damn, I'd give 50 bucks to run into that guy. That's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> but he's just, yeah, I guess that happens. But if you have kids and people are like running into them oh, on yeah. the street, that's, that's got to, Kill it makes somebody. you a little sick of Hollywood, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I just get tired of the dude flicked a hypodermic needle at me one time, dog. I was like, yo, this lady took a shit in front of the studio and then looked at me like, what, you ain't never seen a person taking a shit before? I was like, well, no. <laughs> was like, oh, I've never just watched a lady take a shit on the <laughs> sidewalk. So, you know what I'm saying? This is new for me, you know what I'm saying? My kids are right here. And then <clears throat> I see her the next day and she... She said on the on the on the bus on the bus stop. I'm walking from Starbucks. You didn't tip her. Nah. Well, she was like, "You want to fuck me?" <laughs> I, t- I was like, "No." <laughs> I was like, "Cause I was appalled." I was like, "Wait, what? Did she just say that? Uh, Do you want to fight? You want to fuck me?" I was like, "No." <laughs> I felt so stupid. I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Like, "Do I want to fuck you?" Absolutely not. You ever been appalled by something you shouldn't have been able to, been a, Have you ever been appalled at a woman saying, hey, you want to fuck me? Right. Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, wait, what? Yeah. I was appalled, man. Yeah. <laughs> I guess being in the thick of it with people like that can make for funny stories, but also it's, it, it, you're, you're on the edge. Yeah. For sure. Well, it's it spawned a a TV show. Me and me and my buddy, uh, we thought about it. We came up with a TV show about Hollywood. It's funny as fuck. Can't tell you about it yet, but <laughs> it's funny as fuck. You gonna shoot a pilot or you yeah? Shoot that's what we're working on right now. It's gonna be an, uh, an animation. It's gonna be animated. Oh, cool. So it's gonna be super dope. Nice. Mm-hmm. We just gotta find somebody that can draw it and animate it. And shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What they call Toon Boom? That's the software. Toon Boom? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. It's For like real? the the one that a lot of people use. All right. I'll to finish. do... Uh, to do like animation and shit? Yeah. A friend of mine I went to uh, Cal Arts with, He's he did, makes Adventure Time. Oh, uh, your friend makes at, Adventure Time? Yeah, he works at Cartoon Network. Are you serious? Yeah, he's super, super nice guy. Um, well, you but he's got a cool ass job. You. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'll hit him up. He's got a family too, so. It's hard Damn, to that's him. funny as fuck. I have a I have a member uh, I have a membership with them from two thousand and nine. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You've always wanted to yeah. make a to make a uh, cartoon. It's, my <laughs> it's destined to be. That's man. crazy. It's my password and my username, dog. <laughs> that's the right. I didn't say it wrong, right? It's called Toon, Toon Boom Animation. Yeah. yeah, that's. I think that's the one a lot of people use. Oh, that is funny. Oh my god, that's what's up. Yeah, <laughs> I've always wanted to make a cartoon. <laughs> I never bought a membership, but I've looked at it, looked at how it works. <laughs> yeah, check it out. I I don't know the process, but I think you make a. You do the audio first. Sometimes you can do the audio first or the audio second. Mm. You may, I probably sound like an idiot trying to. <laughs> it's good. I think you got to do the audio. You got to, you know, after it's all done. Fine. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. So, what you been up to, man? Just working. Just, I'm still kind of getting used to living in LA. Oh, word. Yeah. Where you from again? 
San Francisco. Oh yeah, it's up on the wall. Oh yeah, it is. My fault. I'm, you know, I wear glasses and shit, dog. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> can't uh, can't break free of it. Well, fuck okay, it. That's hometown. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, straight up. So, what's like hard for you, man, or what's different for you living in LA? It's just different to find the same quality of life after you move. For me, oh word! Like I miss my old stuff. That sounds really superficial, <laughs> but I miss my old stuff because I got rid of all my old furniture. Yeah, all my shit. You know, I miss my old cat. <laughs> like, fucking miss my cat. Miss all my old bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All my old bitches. <laughs> Just that. And then it wasn't, I didn't have the same way to make money after I moved. Word, so word. I had to come up with new ways to make money. And I haven't had to do that in a long time. Well, ain't that good though? Yeah. I mean, that's how you get rich, man. Yeah. Coming up with new stuff, new ways to make money, bro. Being it with your back against the wall. <laughs> well, <laughs> that part. <laughs> I mean, that too, man. That make you, when it gets tight, if it's comfortable, if you're going to be comfortable for your whole life, man, it's like, how do you, you know, advance? Like, if there's no pressure, there's nothing pushing you to, you know, be better. How about your, the licensing stuff that you do? How did you get from, what, Minnesota? Yeah. To here, to Hollywood? Did you start doing licensing stuff in the Midwest? Mm Mm-hmm. That's exactly how I started. <laughs> uh, no, I was doing a, um, I was doing this thing with my uh, my my wife. Now she's my wife. We weren't even dating, and I just thought she was cute. She used to like book me for all of these shows. So we were working with um, this thing called Target Market. Target Market was the sister company of the Truth. You ever seen the Truth commercials, the anti-smoking commercials? Yeah, yeah. So okay. Target Market is the sister company of, of Truth. So I used to do performances with them all the time. And then one day they put me on, my, one of the guys put me onto this thing where it was like, well, the Heart and Lung Association, they uh, they partnered with The Truth. And so they wanted me to do a commercial, did the commercial. And that led to the guys that, that gave me the publishing, my first publishing deal. They were doing the commercial. They were responsible for, they were, uh, responsible for finding the music for the commercial for the Heart and Lung Association. So through the Heart and Lung Association, they introduced me to In the Groove, In the Groove. Uh, started working with them, and then, boom, you know, started doing a whole bunch of shit. First gig was like uh, Fox Sports. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the theme song for uh, ACC. It was tight. Fox Sports Sunday night. Yeah. <laughs> it was tight as hell. Fox Sports Sunday night, and then it goes conference. Shake up. That was funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to pay you now? How does that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> I'll send the invoice. Don't worry. At the end of the quarter. (laughs) (laughs) You might be a my info. (laughs) It's ASCAP and BMI for for sync licensing stuff. For TV. They do all... Yeah, that's that's the money. Yeah. That's where the money comes from, man. Like, I mean, that's a lot of the deals is uh, it's based on sync uh, royalties because they use it repeatedly. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's actually bigger than like radio because you might get like 32 spins on radio. Yeah. When on one song in a quarter, I can get like, I don't know, 3,000 plays. Wow. Um, depending on what's it, what, it, what it's in, how many times they rerun it. Like, you know, it can, just, it can be ridiculous. It can be minimal too. I seen my, my statement uh, said uh, 60,000 um, plays in one quarter on Hulu. Right? A hundred and... Yeah, hundred and thirty some thousand on uh, on uh, Voodoo or another streaming platform. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like on demand, uh, MTV on demand and shit. Yeah, that's how many people watch that shit after wow. the fact. You know, just in this quarter, hundred and thirty thousand wow. people. It's like it, get, it can get crazy, man. It can get crazy. Yeah, cause that's what brought me to LA. Right. You know what I'm saying. So like. It's the same. I, th- I think it's with terrestrial radio. It's the same thing. Like you can get, it can get crazy if every yeah. state. I mean, because there's so many sta- yeah, so stations, many different, yeah. and if they're playing it on constant rotation, yeah. That, but you have to be in constant rotation, though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. 
And then you have to have like more than one song and you have to be like a Jay-Z or somebody big, Kendrick Lamar, or you have to be a huge artist to get those numbers on right. radio when yeah. sync licensing is, is actually better for, uh, you know, artists that aren't, you know, uh, big. But then it can make you big because it's putting you in front of an audience and you're actually getting paid instead of paying for promotion. It's like mm. the best thing on earth to me. That it's really, it's hard to break into. I had had a couple of conversations with you about yeah, like, well, yeah, yeah. if I were to try and do this, how would I do it? Yeah. But I ain't shit though, bro. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's your job. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm not shit, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's not hard, man. It's just relationships, dude. If you, can, you just got to build those relationships and stay on top of people. Even for me, man, even moving here, like when I first when I first moved here, it was it was like it was cool. I was out and about. I was doing everything and shit, and just meeting the new music supervisors, the old music supervisors. You know, the ones I already had relationships with, rekindling those and. You know, uh, letting them know that, hey, I'm out on my own now. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm doing my, I got my own company and, you know, letting them all know that. Because they're still all using my old stuff, but I'm letting them know I got new stuff. And they got to take me serious. So I'm trying to get them to take me serious at this point. So it's yeah. like I'm just continuing to work, 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 you know. Um, and just proving myself to them so they could be like, all right, bet. We're going we gonna to keep, we're going to rock with you on your own thing versus rocking with that old company that you were with. I mean, not knocking them because they gave me a, a hell of a start. It's pretty dope. That old company you were with keeps some of the rights and then works yeah. with the music supervisors. Well, they're, they're a publishing they, company. They do pub deals. Yeah, it's like uh, it's a license management. Right. You know what I'm saying? I guess would be the word. You know what I'm saying? Versus a publishing company. But they do publish works. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of the same shit. Yeah. They, they got, they're smart. See, that's the, that's the smart thing about them. They, they're smart. They set up a publishing company and not just a licensing agency. Yeah. They started as an ad agency and then they seen how it, how it was with the, the publishing. So they decided to move over into publishing. You know what I'm saying? It seems like there's a lot of those uh, around publishing companies that just do sync licensing. Mm -hmm. There's probably, you know, dozens and dozens of them just in LA, but they're really insular. You have to know somebody. Yeah, you got to know somebody. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, I've been working with a whole bunch of different people. With yeah. those people. And they know my name because they've been using my music for years. Yeah. It's been 13, 14 years. So it's like, you know what I mean? So they're like, oh, when they see the name, it's like, oh, yeah. You know, we've worked with him before. Yeah. And then they they, well, they want to know what's going on because they're interested in the artist and in, in the, the music. Yeah. And it's not like that. Well... Because you, it was just with this company. It's like, well, we know you. We know your music is good. We've never had any anything wrong happen with your music. Because that's one of the things there. That's why they're so tight. Is because music, especially urban music, is really hard to clear. There's usually a producer, you know, mm -hmm. like with rock music, right? Yeah. If you got a rock band. Well, the guy that's singing is the guy that's playing the guitar. They're in a band. So you have everybody's permission right there. Versus... This artist might have bought a beat from some random dude in Belgium that he didn't get it cleared, right? So now you got to wait for this guy on a whole other time zone to answer your email, to hit you up, to, to license this record. And sometimes they don't have 12 hours to wait. They yeah. may need the answer in an hour. You understand what I'm Plus saying? Plus samples. Yeah, and then samples. And then we don't know if this guy ripped somebody off or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's a lot to worry about in anything like... If like a band is doing a cover or if they took lyrics from uh, a certain song or whatever, that that's the type of shit they, they may run into as, as like uh, for bands. But you won't get no samples because, of course, they're playing it live. Or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, it's usually like with, with hip hop or urban music, it's like there's the sample thing and then the producer thing. And then if they have a feature or, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot more that goes into it. Yeah. So what, what I got lucky with is that I am the artist, I am the producer, you know, and I don't use samples, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's just clear. They can just go and they can just hit the button on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't have to wait for all this extra clearance stuff. So, yeah. You, you could know. make a whole list of big music lawsuits. Every big artist has done it. Yeah. Rolling Stones, The Doors, off the top of my head. I think Tom Waits saved his career because he was dead broke when he sued that dog food company oh, or whatever right. it was. 
Uh, the uh, the Beatles no. and uh, Chuck Berry sued yeah. Chuck, Chuck Berry sued the Beatles. Yeah. Right. That band, The Verve, they sing the Bittersweet Symphony song. Yeah. Everyone knows that song. Yeah. The Rolling Stones get every penny that song ever Are makes. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding and that was, me? They were serious? a one-hit wonder too, so it kind of fucked them pretty bad. I think. Oh my god, that yeah. was terrible. Well, it made it made them big though. Yeah, that's, that's true. Mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the Rolling Stones got it. The, what, one of the top three or four money makers. Hell yeah. On Earth. Metallica, Rolling That's Stones. That's got a sting and, um, a little bit. Metallica, Rolling Stones, and... Um, Madonna? The, I'm talking about as far as like rock bands. Yeah, okay. Like, because uh, I know it's like Metallica, they get a million dollars a show. Yeah. But they do like two shows. Oh, yeah. I was you just at the Giants Stadium in San Francisco and they do a partnership with the Giants. Mm-hmm. Where Kirk Hammett plays the national anthem. Wow. And then they do all this like limited edition merchandise. Mm-hmm. And I'm just thinking, they're huge. They're like an American <laughs> corporation. <laughs> you know? They're like, they're like Oreo cookies or they're, they're <laughs> like Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, I'm saying Rolling Stones is forever, bro. Yeah. The merch, the Rolling Stones. Merch, I'm, t- I'm right? talking about. Metallica though. Oh, Metallica. Metallica. Yeah, Metallica yeah shit. they do the even still, they do the same, same thing at the ballpark. Bro. Same yeah. shit. Metallica shirts, bro, forever be popping. The Metallica logo is like when you see that shit, you're like, yeah, you know what that is. Like, yeah, you know what I'm I think they played they played Antarctica just so they could say that they've played on every continent. Wow. So, wow. I mean, you That's get to that crazy. level. I brought this up actually before on the show. You know Arthur Vogel? Mm-mm. He does the biggest tours. He does the, the Madonna tours and the Rolling Stones tours. The ones where they set up an entire corporation. The tour grosses the eight digits, nine digits. <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting documentary. It was on Netflix, but to see music on that scale, it's just... <laughs> yeah, man, that shit is crazy, dog. But you know what I was thinking about, man, the other day? I was like... Music is every day. It's being created every day. I could put out a, a new song tomorrow if I wanted to. Today, I could say I want to put out a song tomorrow and I could do it and put it up for sale. But you can't do that with a movie, right? But music makes far less, less. it's way less money than a movie could ever make, right? What one movie can make on its opening night is what somebody's career would do for their whole career, their lifetime career. So think $450 million. Think one what artist could gross $450 million. Yeah, not possible. I mean, it's not not been done. Even right. the highest grossing like single events are those big tours and right. those get up to less than two hundred million. You see what I'm saying? And like you'd have to have like a Jay-Z, and that would be the for the full tour. And not even for just a night. Yeah. I'm saying opening night, Black Panther made. $450 million. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And in five days, a, more a, just under a billion dollars. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And this is in a week. Yeah. Yeah, it took them, you know, however many months, a year to make the movie. But like $450 million. Yeah. Take, if it takes you eight months to put out an album or takes you eight months to work on your album. Like, you you worked on it like a movie. How could you make $450 million? I'm saying that to say I'm out of the music industry. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, nah, what I really want to do is I want I want to get into movies, dog. I think that would be the best way to go. And then you license your own movie. You get a check for doing a movie and then you put your music in the movie and get paid to do it. The majority of the of gross on movies is from people in movie theater seats. They do, uh, somebody was explaining to me how it works, uh, uh, how people get paid on movies. Uh, that money that they make is the people that's coming in. I think the movies, they said, the movies did, movie theaters do deals with these guys and they pay them. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Going to see a movie is kind of like going to see a show. You're selling someone a ticket to go into a door right? and, and have this experience, but... I'm saying because music when used going, to have record sales. That was the thing. I don't know if you've heard of records. 
A lot of what people have it. Well, they're used like selling CDs or selling vinyl records used to be a thing. Yeah. Like, I'm old as shit, bro. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I just, got a record collection yeah. in the studio. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have vinyl? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. I know where to get vinyl printed, right? I'm trying to get my, my album put on vinyl, bro. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you mean movies on like records, though? Like the soundtrack to the movie? No, no. I just mean the amount of money generated in the music industry versus the film industry. Oh, yeah. I mean, but even still, I'm saying like this. We got a movie everybody wants to see. So, I mean, I guess I I get it because in urban music, okay, uh, Beyonce is probably, just, I'm just going to use her as an example because she's probably one of the, 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 she has the biggest audience or the broadest audience, I would, I would say, like uh, teenage girls, right? So they want to hear Beyonce, right? A, a grown women want to hear Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? Then you got like another sect of people that want to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like Beyonce has this whole cult following thing, right? So she's probably like the biggest. She would probably be the biggest. She did 350 million in one year, right? Jay Z only did like 30 million that year. Yeah, right. She's she's making money like that over over the course of a year, right? But in a movie, with with the with a movie, you get. Eight-year-old men and women to eighty-year-old men and women that want to see Black Panther, right? There's yeah. just way more people, yeah. right? And then they're spending money, so it's like per family. It's like if I buy Beyonce's album and you're my my little brother, well, I'm here. You can check this one out. You know what I'm saying? Look, let me borrow your CD. You know what I'm saying? Or let me listen to that. We together. I'm gonna listen to that while you listening to it, but. You, you don't have to pay another additional cost to, to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Right. But with um with movies, if I want to see Black Panther, you want to see Black Panther, well, that's $26 because the tickets are $13 a pop. Yeah. If you got a family of five, that's you got a $13 a person. Mm-hmm. And then you're buying popcorn, then you're buying candy, and then you're buying all this other shit, and then merch and all this other shit. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that's like if you were wanting to go to see this band yeah, live. But even you- still, but it's like, well, yeah, that part... But what band is going to bring out eight eight to eight? Bring them out eight to eighty, right? You know what I'm saying? Black Panther brought them out eight to eighty, like straight up. Yeah, even Beyonce can't do it. Right, like she can't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thirteen year old girls, maybe twelve, eleven years old. You know what I'm saying? To twenty something year old girls. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Making movies is hard. I I I shoot stuff and I and I've worked on a lot of music videos and. I always thought about doing a film or working on one. I have. But if it was in my hands, I always th- thought like you could do the festival route mm-hmm. where, you know, you, even if you climb up through the festival circuit, some of those other ones are pretty hard to get into. Like, I don't know, there's, there's a bunch of them. Even then, I mean, you, what you want is to sell the rights to your movie that you've made. I mean, it's tough. I mean, so many people do it. There's so many movies being made that you could go to South by and see. I think it's still pretty tough. Word. One in, in a lot that that can make it into a career. Right. Well, I was I was thinking about that too, man. Because I was even thinking about the guy that did uh, that directed it, that did Black Panther. He also did Fruitvale Station, and he did uh, the other one, Michael B. Jordan. Oh. Uh. Uh, the boxing movie, Creed. So the guy that did Creed, they gave him like a shit low budget on for Fruitvale Station. And then it went up the next movie for Creed. And then they gave him this low budget. I think he only had like 200 million to do Black Panther. Coogler? Yeah, yeah. It's like David Coogler or something like that. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan Coogler, yeah. Sorry, got him all fucked up. They gave him a really low budget for... Um, what's the name? And it was like nine hundred thousand for Creed, and put out a great movie. And he was like, "You just got to be like that, putting out dope content every time." Like, man, I feel like I'm creative enough to to get into movies. It's like if I'm gonna keep putting out good music, uh, the music ain't nothing but just you know the feeling in the movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, get the vision. If you're doing just music, you're just doing audio. You're only doing one portion of of a film. And there's there's a whole other aspect of it. Too. Right. A nine hundred thousand dollar budget is that sounds pretty hard to come by, even though it is, you know, right. less than right. When I mean most movies, they 
they put big, big dollars. Like, like it was like four hundred, four hundred uh, million dollars for one of those movies that only made like two hundred and fifty million back or something like that. It's like damn. Yeah. And it wasn't even all of that. It was just they spent a lot of money. The one that I always think of where he got a huge budget and made a sick movie, but then it didn't make any money. I mean, that happens all the time with movies where like, oh, this movie's rad. And then people don't, it kind of, kind of becomes a cult classic or like right. a sleeper hit. Right, right, right. But Enter the Void, the Gaspar Noe movie, they put so much money into it and it's just amazing. But no one's going to see that a little too hard to sit through. Mm -hmm. But it's like such a rad movie, but it didn't make any money. And then if something like that happens, then it's going to be hard getting a big budget the next yeah. time. Yeah, Like people got to be able to connect with that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like people are only going to watch what they connect with. Or if it's just like like some comedy shit or some shit that they're just into, like some normal running. If you got an action movie with some fire graphics, then motherfuckers are going to want to come see it. If you got a drama with a cute chick, you know what I'm saying? Or some racy shit going on in the drama, then people are going to come see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You get your animation so kids could go see it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just like you get those, you can never lose. Chick flicks, never lose on chick flicks. Yeah. Because they're not expected to be nothing, but you get a little giggle every now and again. You know what I'm saying? For most of, the, uh, for most of it, the humor is dry. You know what I'm saying? Romantic comedies and shit. Like, those always, I would, me and my wife sit and watch romantic comedies like, just because, dog, that's our thing. We don't watch scary movies. We don't watch action flicks. Rom com, bro. Really? <laughs> yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, I broke like one of, Hugh Jackman movies? Or? I'm saying, like, Hugh Jackman movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, motherfucking, I just watched one the other night with. Uh, you ever seen Juno? Yeah. 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 So, like, shit like that. Like, we watch, like, dry ass movies like that. I, what's the, I can't remember the name of the one we just watched. Uh, Almost Maybe. Or definitely, that. maybe. It's it's funny as hell. But it's just like, it's just a chick flick. But it's the shit that they're, they're fucking judging their life by, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of where people are at right now. It's just like, well, this is what's going on in the movie. This is how I'm going to live my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, if you're not fitting in that mode, most people aren't. Everybody wants to be also avant-garde and so different and extra. It's like, man, look, what are we doing this for? You know what I'm saying? You can have your creative expression when you want to have it any other time. But if you're trying to make some money, this is what you got to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to kind of, you got to fit in the mold and know how to take it and use it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like you got to be like, uh, Kill Bill, uh, what's his name? Tarantino. Tarantino. So he gave you something at first that was like, oh, okay, I'm used to this shit. And then he was like, all right, you like that? Then you like this? And he was like, yeah, I like that. What else you got? Then he started slipping in this weird shit. And then it was like, yeah. Wait, what's this, dog? You know what I'm saying? Then he does Grind. That was him. He did Grindhouse and the other one, right? You know what I'm saying? The yeah. Two movies in one. It was like, where? Right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Then like, oh, yeah. Where? Then it was like Kill Bill 3. And it was like, what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. I think he kind of just somehow hit a sweet spot in the 90s where he was able to make Reservoir Dogs and whatever the one before that he did was really cheaply. And then. Yeah, I'm saying. He took Harvey a Weinstein was like, okay, here's all the money for. Pulp Fiction. Uh, and obviously, like, that, you can't really argue with that movie. It's right. great. Well, Pulp Fiction, all right. And, it, I mean, it made a lot of money. It makes, a, basically made Harvey Weinstein's career. But at the end of the day, it's like, I'm saying, it, it fit in the mold, right? And it was it's accessible. No, no, no. No, it was very successful. No, not, ex not accessible. Even, oh, accessible. Yeah. They were easily digestible. Right, right? Yeah. It was like, okay, Reservoir Dogs, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. He did Reservoir Dogs, right? Yeah, that so was the, like, first, the first one. That's his first one, right? Yeah. So that was like, oh, okay. I get it. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like so different that it was like, oh my God, this is a Tarantino flick. Because you never, nobody knew Tarantino's thing until Pulp Fiction. And then it was like, oh, this is my style. Yeah. That's when he started slipping his shit in. Like his, if he could just do it himself, if he had the money up front, his own money up front, like in the beginning, the very beginning before you did Reservoir, Reservoir Dogs and shit and all of that, it would have been a whole nother movie. It would have been a whole different movie. He would have did it like he wanted to see it. But Reservoir Dogs, it was somebody else. And he was like, let me just get this in here real quick. It's just like it's fucking Outcast with the album. Yeah. Their first album, they were fucking pimps. Their second album, they were aliens. And then every other album, they right. were weird as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was good because we kind of followed that transition. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? Jay-Z was a fucking drug dealer turned businessman. But they weren't doing too much wild shit. Well, they first. was pimping, dog. Yeah. He was a pimp. Yeah. <laughs> then he started talking about the stars and Andre 2000 was yeah. a pimp. Like, they was pimps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, then Big Boy's like the gangster. Yeah. You heard his, You heard the Vicious Last Dangerous Rumors? It's one of the greatest albums ever, bro. No. Yeah, bro. It's it's listen. I, I mean, it's I know weird AT as Aliens fuck. really well. Yeah, AT Aliens. That's that's my number one album. Oh yeah, that's my most favorite album. Andre 3000 is my goat. That's my. So yeah. there's there's a top five. I have a top five, and I have a goat. Right. So my goat will never change. Right for forever. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But then I have like top five motherfuckers that they change. Wow. You know what I'm saying yeah. Like, but Andre 3000 is my goat. So it's like, uh, like he. And, Sorry, and Equimini, and I was trying to think of the other one. Well, those Equ- two I know. Yeah, Equimini is cool. I, I liked it. I liked a few songs in there, but I, I haven't had an album from them like AT Aliens, um, where you could just from the first song to the last. Song, I grew up to it, so I guess it's like I need. I don't. The sentimental value was in AT Aliens, so I, I can't say that it was like all oh, the rest of the albums were bad. But I really grew up to it. But then I'm like, I've heard new stuff from. Kanye is the only person that consecutively I've listened to his albums and I say, okay, I can put this on. I like this album. I like this album. I like this album. I like this album. Constantly, right? And he's grown. He's grown. He's grown. He's grown. Yeah. Uh, Outkast never did that. I don't think so. No, not at all. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think they really hit the mark on that. AT Aliens. Um, was, and then they were like, okay, we kind of got a budget. We, we're going to further into it. Yeah. And their style is in, in, uh, in Equimini. Their yeah. style is like more de- more developed. Yeah, and then um, after Equipment I, it was uh, see you see what I'm I saying. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like, even I know. Could, after I that. could give you Kanye's. If I were to listen six to Outkast, I would listen to one of those two records. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would listen to Equipment. I mean, not even Equipment. I would listen to AT Aliens. That would be the only album. And or Vicious Lies and Dangerous Rumors and the one they had the dual album. I didn't like Big Boys. Speaker I didn't like Speaker Box. Box yeah. But I love Love Below. But then I love Vicious Lies and Dangerous Rumors. I wish Vicious Lies and Dangerous Rumors would have went on that dual dual album. If it would have, it would have been dope. You know what I'm saying? But I just I didn't I didn't care for Speaker Box at all. But what you're saying is is that they're not doing too much goofy shit up front in right. their careers. Yeah, nobody is. Everybody's gonna. They want you to. You have to do it like that. You have to break in. You get in every. You can watch every artist, bro. Every artist, they do some shit that everybody's doing that you're familiar with. Um, and then they jump off into their own shit. They're like, yo, you like that? Come here, check it out. And they take you a little further, a little further, a little further. Next thing you know, you're down a rabbit hole looking like, damn, where's the light? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's how like I see it with directors too. And they're like, some of them might just jump out the window. Some of them are crazy enough to just jump out the window and be like, ah, this is great and it's crazy. And then motherfuckers be like, oh no. But it'd be so crazy if they'd be like, oh my God, it's so crazy. It's great. But just to say it's great. Yeah. Cause it's so crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, I've always, I, w- I wanna try my hand doing a movie, but I don't really know. I, I don't really like screenplays. I don't, I don't know. Do you know how to write screenplay? Uh, nah, I don't. But my like, uh, fade in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't really see. Movies that way. Like I I've see read. movies like dreams. You know how you always you never start at the beginning of a dream. You're yeah. always in the middle of a dream. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or you always come in the middle of some shit. That's how I would see movies. But that's how I follow movies. Even like when I see a movie, it'll be like it'll start in the middle of the dream or in the middle of the, the movie. And it's like, yo, what the fuck? And then it'll be like, all right, one week before. And then it'll, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I watched a heist last night. And it was like, they started like, when the people were running down the street shooting and just all this chaos and shit. And it was like, yo, and it was like one week earlier, but it was like 10 minutes, 15 minutes into the movie. And they say, okay, this is what happened before to even get to this part. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, oh, so it's like, it's like a, a dream. So maybe just write it like a dream. You yeah. You know what I mean? Versus saying like, uh, intro, we wake up in the morning and life starts. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Like, it's like, nah, you're running down the street, cops chasing, real, 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 the shots, bang, bang, bang. Yeah, well, yeah, you could like, do it that way too. You know who Paul Rubens is? Pee Wee Herman? Yeah, 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 yeah. He went to uh, the same school as me, Cal Arts, 
And I heard some interview with him and he was talking about, because he, both he and uh, Tim Burton went there mm. in the 80s. And the first movie they did together was Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I love that movie. Though. But it, there was this interview with Paul Rubens and he was saying that when he found out that he got the budget, he didn't have a script yet. They said, okay, you can do this, but you need to write a script, send us a script. And he got the, um, it's this book called Screenplay by Sid Field. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what you said. It, it does the whole story arc of a screenplay, literally piece by piece. Oh, and wow. you do it out on three by five cards. And he said he bought this Sid Field book and he wrote the entire thing in two or three days just from that book, note for note, out of wow. the Sid Field book. It is that, you know, the hero's arc. But it, that's what the movie is. He wakes up in the morning and he goes oh, yeah. on an adventure. And then right. he, the tension is that his bike is stolen. Right. The most textbook story <laughs> that you could possibly come up with. It's the archetypal story. Whereas like something like Tarantino, the time's all messed up. And then you follow it back from the beginning in the yeah. middle of the movie. Yeah. But it's coming from, it's crazy. It's right. just, that's a mind fuck though. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm saying. There's something to be said by just doing the regular right. vanilla story. Right, you know? right. I mean, but I mean, any good movie, most good movies start like that. And I think that's where it's like, especially the ones with the narrative, like, you know what I'm saying? They have a narrator. It's like, here, let's start from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, today wasn't a regular day. Uh, my wife was mad and, you know, pancakes got thrown. And it's like, wait, what? And then it's like, all right, let me take you back. So I woke up this morning. She was mad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, we get it. So it just, I don't know. It's one of those time burners or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but it's like, but I want to do like a series though. That's why I want to do like an animated series. But, um, I think I think that it's gonna be like that because the the whole storyline we like we start mapping it out. Uh, it's the the guy starts at the beginning of the day every day. He wakes up every morning, and his whole objective is not to get scammed <laughs> in Hollywood. Uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? So every morning he wakes up like. Ugh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm if it was a movie, it would start at the end of the scam. Like what the fuck? How the fuck did he get tied up in a? a vat of radioactive waste. And it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then it starts. It's like, all right, well, let me tell you about earlier in my day. How did, how did I get here? I know you're thinking, how did I get here, right? <laughs> well, in one episode, he should definitely join Scientology. Oh, yeah, he's got to join Scientology. Yeah. Because, bro, that's Hollywood. Bro. Yeah. That's, Try to <laughs> not join Scientology. <laughs> he has to, bro. He has to. That's so funny, bro. Like I was just do they just do not take no for an answer. It's scammed. <laughs> like it's like it's like, man, you want a personality test? It's like, yeah, I'm pretty good where I'm at, man. Yeah. I know who I am. He's like, Are you sure? It's like, yep. He was like, Well, do you want to know anything about yourself? You want to fix anything about yourself? I was like, nah, pretty stable person, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm working on myself. You want some yeah. candy? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, <laughs> you sure you want you don't want any help? Where could you be better? I was like, I think I'm good, bro. <laughs> he was like, but are you sure? I was like, I'm positive, dog. I'm good. It's like, no, man, but you really should just get to know yourself. It's like, bro, you're creepy now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Leave me alone, bro. You're worse than these Kush guys running around here. Kush, Kush, Kush. Yeah. But what yeah, I, I didn't think about that one. He kept, he cast like, he's got to escape, <laughs> escape Scientology. <laughs> yeah. Or you could get him, you know, like he gets addicted to drugs and then he's in like an AA meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other Hollywood antics? Oh, man. Shit. All, everything, man. The, 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 everything, man. You get the promoters, then you get the businesses, then you get the motherfucking hospitals. They just did this study on hospitals. Actually, it was, that's a scam across the world um, where they charge this lady, uh, $7,000 for an ice pack and a bandage. How? Yeah, that's what ice pack and band-aid cost <laughs> at the hospital. Like, she went to the hospital and uh, they gave her uh, a bandage to put on a cut, I guess, that she had. She hit her head or something. They gave her an ice pack and a bandage because she was bleeding. She fainted. That's what happened. She fainted. Uh -huh. And she hit her head and she was bleeding. So they gave her a bandage and then the ice pack for the knot, right? Then she found out she wasn't covered. Her insurance wouldn't cover her visit to the doctor. So she left and went to an in-network doctor. 
And she ended up still getting a bill from the hospital, and the bill was like seven, seven grand. Yeah. And her insurance only covered four grand. Yeah. So she still had, or like three grand, and she still had this four grand bill. It was like, it was crazy as hell, man. So that's part of the shit. Like, it's it's some of everything. Somebody selling you some shit. Man, I got this phone for sale. I got these Gucci shoes for sale. Yeah. You know <laughs> it's like, yo, I got this, this, uh, <laughs> anything, bro. Anything is a scam in Hollywood, dog. Yeah. Everything is a scam. Yeah. Like, how they be smoking weed. Like, yeah, they be having gas in the blunt. And then they'll sell you a bag of weed and some dirt. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. All that shit. Fake money. Motherfuckers paid with, with some fake money one time, dog. Like, ran off on studio time. Like, yeah, I'm just going to the car. Skirt. Fuck. <laughs> like, yo, I'm talking about... It was like, it was just crazy, bro. This one chick, she came and got work. And it was crazy, man. And she... Uh, it was crazy, man. I don't want to talk about it. But anyway... Mm. Did a charge yeah, bag. The first time I'd seen fake money was when I moved here. Yeah. In West Hollywood. Yeah, see what I'm saying? It's crazy as hell, man. But it's like all of that shit, bro. It's just it's just like I'm 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 I think hospitals do that everywhere. Insurance is just a scam. Yeah, well fucking hospital yeah, bills insurance. are a scam, dog. Fucking seven thousand dollars for an ice pack. Well, that's because they're they can ask that from the insurance companies because the insurance companies are these big financial scams that are legal. Right. Mostly. So why would the hospital? Because the, the, the they only covered a percentage of that. I don't know. That happened to me too. It's like four grand. That that makes you, you have to have insurance. See, they're playing a part into you have to have insurance. Otherwise, you got to pay these bills because they're justified paying $7,000 or charging $7,000 for an ice pack and a Band-Aid. Because I went to the ER for, and um, I still owe... UC San Francisco, like twenty five hundred bucks or something. See, what I'm eventually saying? they stop. They stop bugging you. Well, they stop bugging you, but that shit's on your credit. Medical bills, bro. Yeah, like medical bills. Like it's we had insurance. Me and my wife got insurance. Like you know, it costs. It's like a lot of money to just have a baby. It's like seventeen thousand dollars just to have a baby. Twenty eight thousand dollars. So how much? Hey Siri, how much does it cost to have a baby in California? How much it costs to have a baby? Speaking of scams, you know, that's serious a scam too. Oh, yeah. She hard-headed as fuck, though. <laughs> <laughs> she be listening in when she ain't supposed to. But I don't care. I ain't doing nothing wrong. This phone is this phone is crazy. This phone has a brain, dog. I put paint over the little cameras on the front. So you can't get the face thing, huh? No, I don't need that. Is that the X? Why, did, why do you have the X? For the camera? Because I got scammed into paying whatever Verizon <laughs> charges for it. A thousand dollars paid off over a year or whatever it is. It costs $12,000 to have a baby without insurance. Damn. Even with full coverage insurance, it's $1,100 to have a baby. Yeah. That's crazy. The three days that you go to the hospital to have the baby. Oh, not all the checkups and everything no. over the... Nah, fam. The fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, healthcare and uh And this is not even this is not even US. counting your premiums, bro. This is just Well, I was gonna ask you about that too. I would, I wanted to back up a little bit and um yeah, ask about your kids. How old are you again? Oh man, I'm old as you hell, to bro. Say. I'm I'm a vampire dog, I'm ageless. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't age, man. I was just playing. I feel twenty two. How about that? Yeah, you're, st- you're developmentally arrested at 22. Yeah. I think I stopped somewhere around 10. But. <laughs> Man, I feel you. I made it to 22, bro. <laughs> That's when I figured it out. I was like, oh, shit. That's when you figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So I don't have to get old. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, man, but I'm 38, man. Mm. 38. Oh, man, Brad. But your oldest of the four? Five. Five. <laughs> That's, I mean, your oldest of the five. So how old were you when you when you had your first kid? My first kid was 13 years ago. Yeah. 13, exactly 13 years ago. Mm. Uh, so I was 25. Wow. So before you moved? 
Yeah, before I moved to California? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I moved to California six, seven years ago. So I had one kid here. Yeah. Six years ago. Five, five, six years ago. So I had one. One of my kids was born here. He's four. He'll be five this year. My son, he's 13. My daughter's 16. Her birth, she'll be 16 on May 24th. My son just turned 13 on, on the 13th, on Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. So, and then I have a, my 10-year-old, 7-year-old, and a 4-year-old. Are any of them into music stuff? Yeah, they on Mother's Day they recorded, they dropped three tracks. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, sick. Nice. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they're into music. They be battle rapping and shit like each other and shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they sit. Excuse me. They sit with me in the studio all day. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying like the baby especially because he doesn't go to school. So he's with me all day when I'm when I'm at work and shit. And then I leave and go with the other ones and I sit at the studio for a little while longer. You know what I'm saying? Then we go home and shit. But how are the schools in LA? Shitty. They're shitty? Hell yeah. That's God. what I would guess is that the private schools are really expensive and mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. And then there's a gap there. Yeah. It's like it's either it's either great or it's shitty. I want to send my kids to the Disney school, man. What's that? Cal Arts? No, nah, the Disney school. Oh. It's like in Burbank or something like that. Okay. I think, yeah, it's in Burbank. But it's like, it's pretty dope. My, my homeboy, uh, his kids go there and he said it's amazing. Nice. You know what I'm saying? It's good for kids. Like his four-year-old daughter come, no, no, dad, you put the salad fork on this side and this. Oh, we don't drink they teach tap elo- water. Elocution, that's what they call it. Yeah, all of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talking about some like, don't drink tap water because it's got so many chemicals. We got to get our... We got to keep our pH balance at a nine. Da, 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 da. Like, it's crazy. We should eat yeah. kosher and all of that, whatever. You know what I'm saying? All of that good mm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, they just teach, teach them better there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like public schools is just babysitting, dog. You know what I mean? Especially, like, I got four little black boys. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Three little, well, three, three school-age black boys, right? And so they always, oh, I think he's special. He needs special attention. And I think we should put him in this class. It's like, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, we're not going to put them in a, a special ed class. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, why? You try to, They try to put me in a special ed class. I was like, why do I have to go to special ed class when yeah. I'm 99%, 100% of my tests? Just being black? Of, well, that's kind of one of the things. That? Yeah, it's, it's just a systematic thing, man. Really? So now we grow up as black guys thinking we're not smart as everybody else. So we're... For one, either always we're always either behind because we're like, well, we're not as smart as everybody else, so it gives us an out to just not even try. Yeah. Right. Or it does another thing, but it forces us to go harder to get that uh, approval, right? To say, hey, yeah, he is as smart as me. Uh, to have a white guy say, yeah, he is as smart as me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and once we get that approval, it's like, cool. It's like, all right. And we don't rebel. We don't do nothing because we're like, we got our approval, guys. Now we can. We're, we're accepted. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's a systematic thing, man. Yeah. Like, for sure. There's this thing called stereotype threat. And it's, uh, it, it came before, there's a really like controversial book about, about race and genetics. It, it made a big splash in the intellectual world, the bell curve. Uh, but there's this other thing that I was uh, listening to on a podcast called Stereotype Threat. Mm-hmm. And it was um, in social psychology, it was come up with uh, in the 90s, I think. And it was like this big famous study because it showed that people, whether it's women or like, you know, black people, they statistically will do lower on certain tests. And what the guy did was he, like, say the test is supposed to be, you know, this woman, it doesn't do as good as this man on this math test. And across the board, they're always not doing as good. But then when you tell them that it's not a test of intelligence and it's just a study, they get the same scores as everyone else, you know, to because they thought they were supposed to fail. Well, yeah. I don't know I mean, if I'm you describing know, no, no, that I get, well, I get, I get that. Yeah. I, I get exactly what you're saying, bro, bro. With that, I mean, at the end of the day still too, it's just like, there has been, like, for, for the longest time, you got to think about it, we weren't even considered human, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like we we always had this, even though we taught the majority of the subjects in, in the world from math to agriculture to 
language to from written language to spoken language it was most of it was black people, right? You know what I'm saying? Or Africans, I should say. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That 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 uh taught all of that, you know what I'm saying? From Asia being eighty some plus percent uh black people, teaching Asians agriculture and math, right? To teaching uh Germans uh Alexander Pushkin, right? Uh-huh. He's a uh uh black guy. He invented the 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 uh, German language, Russian language, one of the two. Uh-huh. One of those. Um, you know what I mean? So it's just like it's like it's it's a it's a it's a lot, man, that that to say that we if we're teaching math uh-huh. when at the time when when it was like, okay, you know, Europe is white, Africa is black, when there are 40 some odd universities in Africa and there are only two in the whole Europe. That goes to say something about something. And to now that we're not even human, when we're teaching, you know, the teaching them, you can't have your dog at the table. You can't eat with the same hand that you feed your dog with. Uh You know what I mean? You can't wipe your ass and then eat your food Uh because you'll get a disease. Right. Right. You know what I mean? You'll, you'll, you know, we're we're saying this, hey man, you know, here where we do, if we have to wipe our asses, we ain't got soap. We wipe our ass with the left hand and we shake with the right hand. Yeah, like right? uh, in Islam, that's a big... Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, that's not how it was at first with them. But then now to, to turn it around, it's like, yo, well, you guys aren't even human. Yeah. You guys aren't smart as us. You right. guys are less smart than us. Right. That's just kind of what, what's been, you know what I mean? Yeah. From being a black, not even doing a study, not even just living my life Yeah. as a black dude. I was thinking as you were talking, but... What the study was, it was like, it just proved that it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it's kind of something that I've always thought, like, if we're going to talk about race, like, why are we even talking about it? Even just talking about it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like, yeah, I it's mean, not, if it's a non-issue, then it's a non-issue. Right. But I mean, it is, it is an issue. But it is, right. So you know that's the other it's, side of it too. There, it is an issue so, because it's uh-huh. like, it's like, because at the end of the day, I'm not reminding myself that I'm not as good as, you know, other people. It's not me telling myself this daily. It's other people. It's from when from when I was growing up to how people treat me, right. to yeah, how people even man. talk to me. Even, even I have conversations with, I have a conversation with a person, right? So I went to school for psychology, right? I have a conversation. I understand big words and shit. You know what I'm saying? I use big words and shit. I just rather use plain words because it's more easy to communicate. Yeah. So when I'm when I'm talking to somebody and they're like, da, 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 okay, let me break it down and talk slow for you. And it's like, you know, and I get this, the, the puppy dog, huh? It's like, no, I know what these words mean, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can have a and then I have to, I have to go extra. I have to be extra to prove myself. And I I just I don't think personally that I should have to prove myself to anybody, right? So I'm in a constant state of proving myself, even with the word test, even with the test, I'm constantly having to prove myself. My kids constantly have to prove that they're just as good as the rest of the kids, right? Yeah. Even though my kids are smart, like they're, they're very smart. My kids are smart. Like my, his, my son's math teacher, yo, you should put him in engineering. He's 100% of the test. He wasn't even here to study for the test. He didn't even know half the test because half the test I explained on Tuesday and he was absent. Yeah. On Wednesday, he came to school and I explained the rest of the test to him. Thursday came, they had the test. My son aced the test 100%. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 100%. He's like, yo, this kid is crazy. He's he's like, I'm. he's telling me we should move to Palo Alto so we can raise him there and put him into engineering. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He was like, yo, because this kid is bright. But I get calls saying my my kid is, he's not smart. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He's, 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 he's. You know what I'm saying? He's different yeah. from another kid. He's he needs special education, and that's for all three of my sons, though. So you're telling me all three of my kids need special education? I need a special education, and my big brother needs a special education. My father needs a special education. <laughs> right. Seriously, you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. no, my my brother graduated high school valedictorian in the eleventh grade. The first semester of eleventh grade, he graduated valedictorian. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I know my brother didn't need special education. Right, but they're telling you well, he needs special education. He needs to be in a, the slow class. Hmm. So it's like it's crazy. Yeah. What do you do with that? Right. Well, we just I just try to 
block that from, from my kids. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't let them put them, my kids in no special class so they don't think that they're slow. Right. You know what I'm saying? I need them to be at the same speed. If you're teaching these kids, they're supposed to be learning. If they know this stuff already, then you wouldn't be teaching them. So, of course, you have to teach all the kids the same stuff. Yeah. So, you're telling me, well, your kid doesn't know division. Well, no kids know division yet. Yeah. And then the fourth, third grade, they're just learning division. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of my other sons. Yeah, he might write his S's backwards, but he's in the first grade. Uh, like, <laughs> like, he's a kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, There's also many different types of intelligence. I mean, my mom was a teacher. I can't imagine. There's so many different things that somebody could be good at. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just like you know, if you see you see the things like they judge, they judge kids on one thing. They judge everybody on one thing. And if you ever seen the meme where it's like you got a teacher sitting behind a desk, right, and then you have all these different animals, right, and they're saying the test is to climb that tree, but you got a fish, you got a you got a fish, you got a snake, you got a, and the the fish is in a fish bowl, by the way. You got a fish, a snake, a bear, a tiger, and a monkey. It's like, well, who's going to pass that test for sure? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you can't judge. You can't judge everybody. You can't judge everybody's intelligence on by, by how well they climb a tree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, some type of metaphor, but it's like, that's kind of just the truth. You can't judge everybody on how well they tie a, a climb a tree. because Or on how well they do in school. Right. I mean, a lot of people are really smart that... School's not for them. School wasn't for them, right? Yeah. Like, I know my one guy, this dude, he's done two stem cell researches for Obama, right? This kid just wants to rap. Yeah. He's crazy ridiculous. Like, he's like he's a genius. Like, he's done, like, reports for Obama twice. You usually only get invited to do one. Yeah. He came back twice. And they wanted him to come back for good. And he was only 16. What the fuck? Wow. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's actually, he was only 15. He was 15 the first time, 16 the second time. Before he graduated high school, he already, they were like, yo, just come work for us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he's a genius. He was like, nah, I just want to make music. And he sucks. <laughs> so it's like, damn. You know what I'm saying? But what do you yeah. do? I don't want to tell the kid, man. Just leave the music alone. Just be smart, dog. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He invented, like, he's a crazy genius, bro. Yeah. But his music's terrible. Huh. So it's just like. Stem cell studies. Yeah. That's crazy. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> Not just uh-huh. once. You know what I'm saying? Twice, dog. Yeah, I just saw today, this morning, a friend of mine is graduating Columbia. I was thinking, damn, I could have stayed in school, but have a little tinge of regret and jealousy, but it was never for me. The reality of it was that I couldn't do it. Yeah, man, you're going to go to school and what? Like, learn what? You know how saying? to write essays and yeah, make that's studies. I mean, apparently Pee Wee Herman just learned how to write a script reading a book, dog. That's true, yeah. Information is out there. You don't even need to motherfucking go pay this $100,000 to go to school. Yeah, the money thing bothers me. Yeah, that shit is the way money too part expensive, of it bothers man. Me. Yeah. It's like, and then you don't even get a job after all of that. You know what? My mother has five degrees, right? She doesn't do nothing. Literally? Literally. Five degrees. And she doesn't have a job doing nothing. Her last job for the last 15 years, she's working at the cable company. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So wow. she could be a cop. She could be like a whole bunch of different things. A sociology worker or, yeah. or whatever. It's a whole bunch of different things. Hairdresser, everything, bro. Everything. Right? And she don't do none of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, It's like my brother was going to school forever. Nothing to do what he's doing now. He's going back for another degree. Mm-hmm. Nothing of what he was doing in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like going to school. It's like nobody knows what they nobody knows what they want to do when they're young. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. well, I'm just thinking about the future and just in case. It's like, nah, you're supposed to like. You got to, a lot of people don't figure that out until now. Like, I didn't figure out what I really wanted to do until like later in life. Like so, now, you know what I'm saying? I know right. what I want to do. It's like. You know, because your your feelings change, your mindset changes, you grow up. You know what I'm saying? You get this job in this place, and now you're like, oh, I dread it. I don't want to do it. Now you hate it. Now you hate Mondays, and you're just living for the weekend. You know what I'm saying? That shit is weak as fuck. Now you're just in the cycle of just yeah, a fucking, you know, sheep. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, a ro- oh. middle-class robot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you don't think outside of that? You know what's so funny, man? 
they, they interviewed Elon Musk and somebody was like, well, you don't have a college degree. He said, well, so the people that work for me do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, damn. It's like, it's a powerful statement. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Gary V, he said that. Fuck school, bro. Gary V. I love that dude. You dog. do? Hell yeah, man. That's real shit, though. It's like <laughs> straight up, man. It's real shit. He's like, it's. How sp- did he make his money? Gary V? Yeah. That's the. Uh, I'm not, I'm confused about how he made his money initially. And then now he's like a marketing character. He's He was something. He's big on something. I can't remember. Let me see. I'm going to tell you right now, dog. Gary Vandercheck. Yeah. He started a speaker in the first known for a wine critic grew his family's wine business from $3 million to $60 million. Wine. Yeah. Hmm. But he started something else, though. I mean, that's so odd. Wine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Gary v. I mean, he's got a good attitude. He's worth $160 <laughs> million, though. Oh, my God. Angel, angel investing, entrepreneurship, right, social that, media, right. and wine education. But you don't jump into angel investing. <laughs> right. <laughs> my uh, family's from Palo Alto. I lived there a little bit. For the real? same, yeah. He lived uh, on the same street as... Zuck. All word. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But that's why I want to take my kid, man. I was thinking about that. Just um, get this next two years, just get this big dumbass bag and just move to Palo Alto, man. It's for my kids, yo. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's for the kids, bro. Palo Alto is, I mean, you know, eat what East Palo Alto is, right? Mm -mm. It's in the 90s. It was like the highest murder rate in the country. Damn. They take all the black people and they're on the other side of the freeway. It's not as bad now, but at one time, it was really bad. East Palo Alto, yeah. They they call it the gig. Damn. Yeah. Palo Alto, I hate it there. But I grew up there partially, so I'm biased. Oh, okay. Word, word. But it's. I mean, it ain't shit to do. It reminds me of Malibu. Lots of money everywhere. And... No, nah, they're like superficial just, people yeah. and shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> Weirdo. weirdos. Yeah, That's I like, mean, but I'm like, saying though, uh, like I want to move to that part of Palo Alto where it's good, man. I just want my my kids to have like I grew up in the hood and shit. I don't want my kids to grow up in the hood and shit. You know what I'm saying? I want them to know something different. Take them to the hood, of course. You know what I'm saying? And learn like you know the difference and shit like that. But I don't want to force the hood on them, man. Because you're a product of your environment, of course. That that definitely stands true. You could either be great or you could just be fucked up. Yeah. And that's four dudes that I'm responsible for, right? Right. So if they fuck up in life, guess whose fault it is? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? No, I'm not kidding. So yeah. it's like, I'm just trying to make sure they have everything they need so they ain't got no excuses to be like, oh man, well, I fucked up because I didn't have a proper da 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 So yes, you did. You know what I'm saying? I made sure of it because I already knew what it was. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I seen my hangups and shit. It took me till I was 38. I was like, oh, fuck. I just figured it out now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, my job as a father is to make sure they figure it out 20 years before I did. You know what I'm saying? So I'm supposed to take everything I learned and give it to them so they don't have to go through all of the bullshit and, and then live their life and be like, oh, fuck, at 38. You know what I'm saying? I need them to go, oh, fuck, at 19. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, so... That's my uh, shtick, trying to be a, a responsible parent dog. You know, Hollywood is hard. <laughs> yeah, no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but it's cool though, man. I'm, I'm used to it, man. Like, I guess, like, I'm from, I'm from, like, a different place. You know what I'm saying? Like, where it's like, the only thing that's different out here is, like, the bums. Stepping over the bums and all the people, the homeless people and shit like that. I'm not used to that because in Minnesota, it's like, no, I heard bombs are not too cold. Hell yeah, it's way too cold, bro. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. I, we see homeless people every now and again, though. But it's like they we have home, homeless shelters. They have so many homeless shelters in Minnesota. Like you know what I'm saying. There's homeless shelters that like they're bigger than like some of the fucking big buildings downtown. It's fucking huge. But it's like <clears throat> here, even if you go to the county and shit, and you're like, "Yo, I need some help." They're like, "Yo, well, just go stay on Skid Row, and we'll hit you up. We'll come find you on Skid Row." It's like, what? <laughs> go to yeah. Skid Row. You just told somebody to go live on the street, <laughs> yo. Yeah. Damn. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so that shit's, <laughs> shit's weird, man. But that's that's the only thing. But everything else, man, it's like it can, insane. It can toughen you up, like growing up in a big city. 
Yeah, of course. Hell yeah. It just makes you, you, you got to stay on your grind and keep you on your grind. You can't get complacent. Like in Minnesota, I got comfortable where I was getting my royalty checks and shit. And I would just kick back and do shit, make music, kick into the basement, kick with my friends, smoke weed all day. Yeah. Not think about shit, drinking every weekend and shit. It's like, now I'm just kind of like, I guess because I'm older and shit now. And it's like, oh man, I'm wasting time. And I hate that. You know what I'm saying? I, I hate wasting time. It's just the most of it. I just realized now, it's like my old shit moment, but came with fucking time is the most valuable thing that you could ever have. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Especially when you got kids. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, with that, it's like, shit. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. I mean, that sounds like me. Run towards the fire. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I mean. It's, I grew up in the suburbs, and then as soon as I could, I was out. Out of there, yeah. Yeah. I moved when I was 16, dog. I moved out, well, I think I was like 17. I was, yeah, 16 when I was going, 16, 16 going on 17. Actually, I had just turned 17 on January 1st, uh, my 17th. Uh, my birthday is December 12th. Right. So it was like, shit, two weeks after my birthday, I was gone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I was like, yeah, we're both December. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's when we met. As I remember, I came over to your studio when I moved in and it was like December. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's my birthday it's, or something. Yeah. I think it might I was, have been my I'm birthday sure that I day. It was your birthday. It was? Yeah. I was like, because I was still fucked up for my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nice. your birthday like the the 16th? It's the 15th. Yeah. The 15th. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. So uh, Butch's birthday is the 16th. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. So it's, Damn. <laughs> to everybody. Yeah. So yeah, you came over on your birthday and we still had like drinks and shit. You was like, fuck it, it's my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty tight. It was pretty tight. This looks comfortable out here though. It looks it's peaceful. It kind of reminds me of like a uh, San Fran up there. Like walking up all them damn stairs, that hill. Yeah, the stairs. Yeah. I miss it there. You, you just become numb to bums or drugs. Uh, there used to be a guy um, on my block, and his name was AK. He, his thing was was drinking Red Bulls during the day and kicking trash into the public trash cans on the street. He would wear, like, just the most bizarre kind of, like, late 80s shit that he got from the thrift store mm. with, like, pink, you know, <laughs> like, pants on his head, like, spandex shit on his head. And, <laughs> and he would just kick... Uh, all the trash from the street, but only using his feet into the trash cans. So, he, I mean, I don't know what his deal was, but he was just this spaz, like homeless guy that wow. always lived there. Yeah, you just become immune to just the craziness. <laughs> I mean, he was a junkie too. I remember I saw him shooting up one time. Oh my God, man. On, on, in the street. And like, I'd always offer him beer and give him change. And for me, like that, that's... Just one of the little things that I took away from from being in San Francisco and like being in a the inner city in like a city, you know, there's just so much crazy shit. Yeah, I lived above the uh, the Bart tracks. Oh, word! And so I would just live with the trains, and they would you would hear them until two a.m. And it was just wow. like I became like now silence freaks me out. I hear a siren, and it's like, oh god, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my kids up, bring my kids up like that, man. Like, you know how when, like, babies are born, everybody wants to be like, shh, shh, the baby's nap, man. Yeah. It's like, nah, fuck that. Turn this shit up as loud as we can. So, <laughs> so, so I, I'm not going to be walking around on eggshells because yeah. the baby's sleeping. Fuck that. I might be on the phone. Nah. That's what, yeah. A couple of friends from San Francisco were staying here over the weekend, and they had they have a little one-year-old. And they're just giving it so much attention and talking to it like a baby. <laughs> it and is a like, baby, though. <laughs> yeah, but just treat it like a just treat it like another person in the room. You don't have to, a little miniature broke person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, broke person. Yeah, it's like super irritating. It's like just leave it. Like he's fine. You don't have to talk to him like that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't talk to my baby. Uh, my babies like babies. <laughs> <laughs> they babies and shit. Uh, hey, fam. <laughs> What are you doing over there? He's like, oh, nothing. All right, get your ass from over there. Come here real quick. <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, I talk, to my, I talk to my kids like grown men, man. Yeah. I like when a kid can have a conversation with an adult because I don't think I was raised that way. 
I don't even think my parents could have a conversation with an adult. <laughs> That's funny. Like, I mean, so I, I read this thing a long time ago and it was telling me how like JFK raised JFK Jr. and his other brothers, right? He, he would have parties at his crib, uh, JFK, and he would say, yo, Bobby, and you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, you know, Junior, uh, come here. You know, come to the party. Mm. And you tell me all these people's names. You know what I'm saying? Like, for every person, if I tell you their name and you tell me their eye color, I'll give you five bucks, right? Okay. So for every person, he would say. So what it would do is it would force the kid to look at the person in the eyes and shake oh, their hands and nice. catch their name. Yeah. Right? So it's like, what's your name? Yeah. You know, and they're like, oh, it's Tommy. It's like, okay, Tommy. Mm. Okay, tight. Tommy. Looking at you in the <laughs> eyes. Yeah. Tommy's got blue eyes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, oh, okay, word. Five bucks. Right? And so he would have this thing with his friends even. He would be like, uh, he would go to JFK Jr.'s friends and be like, yo, uh, I'll give you $100 a week if you just tell me everything that he does. And if the kid says, he, if he takes the money, he won't let Jeff K. Jr. hang with, with that kid. But if that kid says no one d- uh, declines the money, uh-huh. he lets him hang with his kids. Yeah. If you'll write him out for $100, yeah. then what else would you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So it's like, I try to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did it to my, one of my, my son's kids, and they actually, they're really good friends. I was like, I'll give you $100 if you tell me all the bad stuff he do for the week. Mm-hmm. And he was like, no, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's right my answer. friend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, bet, cool. You can still be friends with all me. Right. You know what I mean? But my kids are all like, hey, how you doing? You know yeah. what I'm saying? They look at you, what's your name? They're all in your face and shit. And they have a conversation. <laughs> okay, cool. And they say it, they say it back to you. And they, they, if you tell them your name, they'll say it back to you and shit. Right, yeah, you know that's, that's another good one to do. You know what I mean? Just so they remember. And every time they look at you and when they're speaking to you, they say your name. Like my kid, it's so bad that my kid says my name every time he talks to me. Oh, yeah. He's like, every time he has a question, he'll be like, Dad. I'll be like, yo, it's da da da. But oh, okay, word. Okay, dad. It's like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> like we're having a conversation. You don't have to say my name every time. You know yeah. What I'm and he's like, oh, my fault, man. It's just habit. You know what I mean? So, uh, and he's having, even when he's talking to his brother, he's like, Caden. Like, okay, yeah, word. Hey, Caden. You know what I'm saying? Huh. But it's it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. They're coming out pretty good, man. Yeah, you want to get out in the world. I mean, growing up in the suburbs, it just felt like a bubble. And yeah, and by the end of you know high school, I was losing my mind. Yeah, the more exposure you can get, I think. You, yeah, the better. I the mean, better as long as you're safe. <laughs> as long as you're safe. Yeah, that's why I was like, you know, talking to my sons, like, man, see, I take away the taboo for everything, right? Because that's what a lot of people go out and go crazy. That's the taboo, right? Because they want to find out what was so bad about it, right? That's why the, 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 the church girl is always the worst girl. She's always the most, right. you know, her father, the preacher's daughter. Yeah. She's the fastest girl. You know what I'm saying? The preacher's kids are kind of like some of the worst kids. You know what I'm saying? Because they're yeah. like, there's a taboo. They want to do it even more. If I tell you don't do it, the more no, I tell you don't do it, the more you sense do it. Right? Yeah. You want some hard drugs, go ask the super Christian kid. He's definitely got some. Yeah. Because he didn't want nobody to look at him like a, you know, a punk. You know what I mean? So it's like you just take away the taboo and explain it, man. Like people are, aren't in explaining to their kids and talking to their kids and shit. And I, I explain that shit to the T with my kids. Some shit that they can't understand or the shit that they can comprehend at the time. Like my kids just asked me, where do babies come from? I was like, oh shit. Like, what do I say? And it was mm-hmm. like, we know the babies mm-hmm. in mommy's tummy. But how is it going to get out? <laughs> is it going to cut it open? And we're like, shit, what you say? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. So my wife's like, yeah, it's going to come out with a belly button. <laughs> but this is the seven-year-old asking. It's yeah. Like, what do you tell him? You know it's going to come out of her vagina. <laughs> it's yeah. Well, like you can kind of put those fires out before they start. It, with me, my mother, she, she gave me the book of Kama Sutra when I was little, when I was like 15. I didn't lose my virginity uh-huh. until I was 18. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? So, so like she, she was like, here, figure it out? Yeah, right, not, not, a, not even figure it out. She or, just was like, well, here, like, this, this is, I know you're going to ask about it. Here's how you be good at it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh. And then when, even when the opportunity presented itself to do it, I wouldn't. I'd be like, nah, I'm good, man. There was no, there was no like, oh, I got to yeah. do it. I wasn't always thinking about it because it was right. like, you know, some mother wasn't like, stay away from girls. And then she yeah. said, oh, you got a girlfriend? She's like, oh, okay. You like her like that? I was like, yeah. She's like, you guys have sex? I was like. No. She's like, are you? I was like, nah. She's like, oh, word. 
Okay, well, whenever you feel like it, you know, here's the book. Check yeah, it out. That's good. Like, oh shit. Some people think it's wrong to lie to your kids about Santa Claus and the stuff nah, like my that. My kids know they ain't no Santa Claus. Yeah. I'm talking about even the the the, the baby knowing ain't no Santa Claus, dog. Really? Gosh, hell yeah, yeah man. I it's like, what are you getting me this year for Christmas, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> it's hell like, yeah. He knows. Yeah. Are you gonna dress up like Santa this year? It's like my four year old, the idea of the big jolly guy. He he knows. But my seven year old, my seven year old, my my ten year old, my thirteen year old, they're like Psst. Santa Claus, what? Yeah, <laughs> you know what, I'm saying? Yeah. what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, it just must be weird because you have to lie to this person. You're like, you know, you're lying, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then you know you're gonna eventually you're gonna have to tell the truth, and they're gonna know you lied to them, right, for a long time. <laughs> like, wait, a that's, a t- that's a tough call, yeah, to man. me. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, man, I just. I decided I was telling my wife, man. So I was just like, look, I ain't fuck this Santa Claus shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Straight up, man. I just told her early on, bro, because I was like, I, I figured it out. I was like, you know what? Like, because I stopped going to church and shit. And I was like, I got tired of being the, the stereotype and I got tired of the fucking pastor. Like, get this guy out of these drugs. Get him, get him off these drugs. Get him out of these gangs. Yeah. Uh, keep him from these streets and get him out of that gang that he in. I'm like, wait. Fam, I sit at the crib building computers all day. What are you talking about? You right. know what I'm saying? I'm a yeah. super nerd. What are you talking about? Gangs. I'm not in gangs. I don't smoke weed. Right. I didn't start smoking weed until I was like damn near 30. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it was like 25. I was smoking weed. Do you know, know, man. You guys don't, you're not, you don't push, uh, you don't do this church on every Sunday thing with the whole kids or anything. It's more open policy. Nah, not at all, man. I don't go to church. Yeah. Like, nah. I mean, I'm a spiritual person. It's not like I'm gonna say I don't believe in God or nothing like that. I believe in a, I believe there's a creator for sure. I just don't believe in, you know, religion. You know what I'm saying at all. My mom's side of the family is very Italian Catholic. Oh, word. So I got the Catholic in my DNA. Oh, word. I can't get rid of it, but I would never, never raised that way. That's how my mom was. She was like a she was a Christian. She was like, yo, she didn't push it on me. She would take me to church if I didn't want to go to church. She'd be like, all right. And you gotta go. Yeah. And will we have conversations? You know what I'm saying? And I would tell her how I felt. She was like, all right. And then when I when I got older, she was like, oh, okay. As long as you don't, you know what I'm saying? You're out here doing no crazy shit. My mother's dope. She just gave me the tools I needed to figure it out. Like, you know what I'm saying? She found out I was smoking weed. She wasn't even mad at me and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She was like, oh, well, if you're gonna smoke weed, I'd rather you do it at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Oh, really? Yeah. Now, was- my mom said the opposite. She said, you can, <laughs> you can smoke, but just not in my house. Well, she was like, you know, because we had a, we we stayed in like, not the suburbs, but we stayed kind of like, we had the only house with a swimming pool in our backyard in Minnesota, right? So it was like the only in-ground swimming pool, like diving board and everything, right? Okay. So I would just go out there and fucking smoke, poolside, like, you know what I'm saying? At yeah. night, just, you know, my mother, if, if it was bothering her, she'd be like, go in the garage, it would go back up in her window and she'd be like, can you just go in the garage, please? And yeah. I'd be like, all right, all right, go in the garage, get high. You know what I'm saying? But that would be so we can jump in the pool and be goofy. I was 19, you know what I'm saying? But I cause I, I left uh, college and went back to help her, you know, get her crib and shit. But it was pretty tight, man. It's pretty dope years, man. I missed 19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was fun. Yeah, me too. I'm, well, I miss 24. 24 was, was like, shit, but that's when I got shit. my wife pregnant. Oh, right. So it was like, no, I'm just playing. Wait, you left Minnesota for college and then you went back home. Mm-hmm. That can that can be tough. Yeah, covering the same old ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, that happened to me too. When I left San Francisco, I moved back. I stayed with my dad for a little bit. And I stayed with my mom for a little bit mm-hmm. to get back on my feet. Ended up getting a DUI. It's Damn. just bad. It's just like not you know fish out of like I should not be back here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't want to go back. I ain't shit there, but I have a trouble. Yeah. Trouble. Trouble. Yeah. Straight up. It's like, I mean, it's, especially because you know all the people that you know. You It's the people you grew up doing dumb shit with. Mm-hmm. So I left and I grew up. And so I'm, I'm in a different mindset. So I go back there and it's a bunch of people in the same mindset mm-hmm. that they were in when we were fucking 19 years old. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, dog, nah, I'm not into throwing eggs at cars anymore. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, talking to, you know what I'm saying, chicks. Uh, Where taking your... random chicks home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do your parents do? 
My mother? Yeah, what's your mom do? Oh, nothing. She's retired, man. She's, she's, she's retired. Yeah. Oh, you said she has she she had a lot of schooling. And yeah. just retired now. Yeah. So nice. she's just she's just now. She's just nothing now. She balls. Like uh Jeffrey Lebowski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly that's exactly it's so funny. Cause she's all about bowl. She's like, Dana, you should bowl. That's my real name, Dana. She's like, oh, you should bowl, you should bowl, you should bowl. I'm like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> I got all these kids and all this shit to Doesn't do. Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne bowls. Yeah, he bowling, fucking skateboard. Skate. He crazy, man. It's too much. I got all types of other shit. That's when you got a lot of money. You can just start figuring out shit you want to do. Random shit. Yeah. You know what I'm it would be a so, dilettante. Right. <laughs> you kind of do something just because you want to. <laughs> yeah. Just to try it and shit. Yeah. That shit's funny. Cool. My little brother, she's, my little brother lives with her though. He's 19. So he, he just turned 19. He makes beats and shit. Nice. So he's like super dope. His father was a musician. My father was a musician. This California thing is, I, I'm almost over. I was going to get a, it's going to move to Arizona, get a crib in Arizona. Yeah. And just have my business out here. You know what I mean? Because it's super cheap to live in Arizona. Yeah. And everything's compared. brand new. Really? Yeah. It's all like, it's all new development. Where? In, in Phoenix. Like, in Phoenix. everywhere in Phoenix. West Phoenix. Fucking Surprise. Fucking Glendale. Like, all those places in Arizona. Fucking, you can stay up north. It's pretty dope up there. Like, Swiss Beach has a crib up there. It's in the mountain. It's always, like, 85 degrees and shit. <laughs> yeah. It's always perfect weather. 82 degrees. Yeah. Like, it's always bomb. You know what I'm saying? When it's not so hot. It's like, when it's hot in, in the valley and shit. Like, in Phoenix, it's like, a hundred and... 10 degrees, 130 degrees. Yeah. On a regular day. That shit is crazy. I burned myself in the seatbelt, bro. My kids got little burn marks on their legs and shit. I so. can't, no. <laughs> That's not for me. No. I'm used to San Francisco where you're just like, you need a jacket all the time. Oh, Unless right. it's August, you know, for a few weeks in August. For a few weeks in August, it's hot? Yeah. But San Francisco in August... Uh, September, you can't beat it. No other city can come close. They call Dolores Park Hipster Beach because it's just people. Just everybody's yeah. out and everybody's just having like the best day of their life. What? But, <laughs> but as soon as it, like even here, if it starts creeping up in the 80s, I just, I shut down. I can't, like, yeah. I can't live that way. Yeah, it's, yeah, when I first came here, I thought I was going to have a, a meltdown, man. It was so hot, dog. I was like, yo, I told my kids, like, leave me alone. Don't ask me for shit. Go get your own food. <laughs> it was like, I was so groggy and irritated. Though. I was like, oh my God, what is this? But it was like 90 degrees, though. Yeah. And I was smoking weed. I was brand new to the California weed. So it was like, my brain was like, Psh. it was yeah. just like, it was stu I was stupid for like two weeks. Yeah. Then I figured out I can't smoke here. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I can't. Be here and smoke. Because like I can't think straight. I'm always sleepy. It's like, uh, and then I don't know what I'm smoking. It's like, it's a sativa. It's an indica. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Am I going to be paranoid? Am I going to be couch locked? Like, yeah. Which one is it? Yeah, when I started growing, I stopped smoking. I can't smoke in the heat. I can't day drink either. It's just not good. No good. Oh, yeah. Day drinking is the worst. By 7 o'clock, I'm put. Yeah. I'm mad as hell. Like. I did that the other day, man. I went to the studio. Yesterday, I just went to the studio with Jeremiah. Uh, and fucking, they brought out a bottle of Hennessy. And I was like, yeah, cool. I'm going to drink with y'all. It's like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And by 2 o'clock, I'm already three glasses in. So I'm like, fuck. You know what I'm saying? So by like 4 o'clock, I was put. I was like, oh, my God. Like. I'm ready to go to sleep and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. So by 10 o'clock, I already got a hangover. I'm like, fuck. And I got a session. I'm like, fuck, man. And my whole day was fuck yesterday. They bring out that that brown. <laughs> I don't tell. No, that's not my thing. What are you, tequila? I like uh, Paps and Fernet. Hmm? And beer, Paps. Beer. Or Jameson. I wish I didn't drink whiskey, but... I'll drink. I'll order a whiskey. Mm. I probably, I drink whiskey at home and then if I go out, I'll order a Pabst and a Fernet. That's what they drink in San Francisco is a, is Fernet Branca. It's a liqueur. Most people think it's disgusting. 
mm-hmm. but it's like a little anise flavored, licorice flavor. Yeah. Like, that, uh, what's the name? Jaeger. Yeah. Yeah. Jaeger. Yeah. Mm-mm. But it's like know. the same thing. That shit tastes like fucking licorice. Yeah. That shit is disgusting. Yep. Yeah. But Fernet, I read something that like 30% of the world's Fernet is consumed in San Francisco. Damn. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> so it must it's just be like, like a thing out there. It's a thing. Yeah. Word. I gotta try that shit, dog. Fernet, yeah. You should have had some. Too. I think bartenders drink it too. If you order a Fernet somewhere, you're either from San Francisco or you're a bartender. Ah, oh, word. Why? Does it get you fucked up? I don't know. Or you could just like function off of it and have a nice cool buzz. Some, something about it. It's got a mystique, I guess. Word, I'm going to order a Fernet next time. I got a Fernet, right? Try a Fernet, yeah. yeah. Fernet Bronca, yeah. <clears throat> Fernet Bronca. Why does San Francisco love Fernet, the bold italic? San Francisco <laughs> drinks more Fernet than anyone in America. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so it's part of my Northern yeah. California identity. Right. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's who you are. Huh? Yeah, I guess so. Man, you want some um, some uh, Harbro's? I mean, a Harbro, the fucking... Uh, oh, yeah. I'm fucking some gummy Harbro. bears. Those aren't good. They're horrible. <laughs> oh, oh, they're horrible. <laughs> Shout out to Horrible for making these gummies. All right, wait, honestly, just say all the shows you're on. What's the top, the ones that people will be like, damn. TV shows? Yeah. Oh, shit. I don't know, man, what the top ones would be, but... I mean, I could say some. <laughs> but, okay. I mean, I don't know what everybody watched. Vanderpump Rules, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Jersey Shore, uh, fucking Spider Man, Wall Street 2. Really? <laughs> yeah. Get, get Rich or Die Trying. Fucking Budweiser commercials everywhere, bro. Fucking, what's the one with the, um, the kid from Doogie Hauser that used to be Doogie Hauser? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So but, you, uh, you know the new show that he has? I don't really watch well, TV. He's like a lawyer or something like that. Okay. Well, yeah, that show. <laughs> Somewhere everywhere. Roll Rules, fucking Bad Girls Club, fucking damn. Some of everything, bro. I can't even. Hmm. It'll be too much to be just naming and shit like that. Yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I haven't seen Wall Street too. I watched the original one recently. I did the trailer. Oh, you did the trailer for that? Mm-hmm. 50 Cent Get Rich or Die Trying trailer. Wow. Fucking Nike commercial. When you're writing, when you're making beats, is it, are there any sort of, because I know what it's like to make, you know, a two track for someone to sing or rap over, but are there any, what, how is it different making something that you'd want to give to your publisher? The only thing I would do different would be arrangement. And then how I give them, how I give them like the deliverables and shit like that, and like the the splits. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't just give them a beat. I would give them the, <clears throat> I would give them the beat, but then I would give them, you know, uh, the 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 elements like the strings, uh, synths, or whatever. Yeah, you know? and then I would do like the bass, and then like drums, and then percussion. You know what I'm saying? Like I would separate it like that, and I would give it to them like that. For music, you'd give them stems. Mm-hmm. But the deliverables to give a music supervisor, you just give them the two track. You just give them the. the no, I would give them the stems. Or you give them the stems. Yeah. And how is the arrangement different? Uh, sure. Like, so if I have a, if I got an eight bar build up, I would turn that eight bar build up into a two bar build up. So it's always changing, and you get time to change in a short amount of time because most times. They use it maybe 15 to 30 seconds of your piece. Mm-hmm. So if if you got an eight bar and then another eight bar, that's your 30 seconds right there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like there's no change up. So, but if you change every two bars, two to four bars, then you got four different change ups in there. And it's like now you have uh, dynamics. Mm-hmm. It's uh, you can cover more ground in short matches. Yeah. And then they just, they'll pick it and they'll say, hey, we're going to use this one. Mm-hmm. Like I did an Adidas commercial and that's what they did. Yeah. They had a song already done, but they hated the song. And then it was like, yo, I got this other beat that might sound good to it. And they they edited my beat to it. And they was like, yeah, perfect. 
So they kind of re-edit the video or re-edited my beat mm-hmm. to fit fit the commercial and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Versus re-edited the commercial. Have you heard of Taxi? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or Sonic Bids? Yeah. I used to Is be on those stuff? when you I first started. Yeah. Worth it? Not now. Not knowing what I know now. No. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're trying to break in then it's just a waste of money. Everybody I know wastes money. You know what I'm saying? You have to be like extremely well because there's so many people on there. The chances of you getting on anything is like slim to none. I got people that's been on there for 10 plus years and only gotten like two placements. Mm-hmm. You know, if that, and that's a good, you know, I'm not dogging them or nothing, but or saying that it's a bad service, but just being in the position that I am in now, just knowing the difference and knowing what you could do, I wouldn't sign up for me personally. Not saying it couldn't work for somebody else. It just wouldn't work for me, myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I had a taxi account long before I was uh, doing the licensing and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> What's your publishing company called? C- C- creative Media Group. Creative Media Group. And then Creative Space is the studio. Mm-hmm. So basically the supervisors will come to you and they'll just go through your catalog that's under Create. Creative Media Group. Yeah. Or they'll, or they'll say, yo, can you just make this song? Mm-hmm. Make this song over. We need a different song. Mm. Can you give me this vibe of this song? But we need to change it all the way up. We just need that vibe. I'm like, all right. Huh. That'll be it for the most part. I get an email, a brief. Huh. Otherwise, or they'll just pick out what I got in my catalog. But if they need something new, they'll hit me up. Or ask me if I got something specific. And instead of listening to my whole catalog, they'll hit me up and say, hey, do you have anything like this in your catalog so you don't have to look through it? Right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I knew. I do got this. What do you do for mastering? Because when I mastered my record, I, I used, I mean, it's, it was super expensive to go through Sterling Sound or Bernie mm-hmm. Grunman or something. Do you just use like Lander? Because you're doing a whole bunch of, you well, know, I imagine you're just making, a, there's a lot of. No. Um, you're not going to pay the, 250 bucks to, to, to master that. Well, I master my own stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, like, um, if I'm doing something, if I'm recreating something, nine times out of ten, I just put a really good mix on it. So I'll have my I'll have my mix as I'm coming in. So I, I like I got a really dope chain, like a, a it's like a, it's a pre-mix. So it sounds good coming in. I got it fit for my voice. So if I'm doing some vocals, it'll just be dope. It'll sound good like a mix coming in and solid. That's all it needs to be. It don't have to be like. For TV, it don't have to be like mastered, like CD quality and shit. It's different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you, people aren't, aren't going to hear it over, they're going to hear it on TV. Hmm. They're going to hear it. You know what I'm they saying? They probably have a post production thing that f- makes it all. S- that, yeah, fit. that masters it all together. And yeah. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, it's like I'm not a, I don't really have to master. And then what's your SoundCloud? Just Mega. All right. J-U-S-T-M-U-G-A or M-E-G-A, excuse me. It's in my Instagram. <laughs> it's it's the link in my bio. Nice. <laughs> just mega everywhere. Instagram, Twitter. It's just mega. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> mega. Yeah. <laughs> but That's good. I'm glad you made it. This is a this is a good one. Yeah, man. I appreciate you having me, bro. Straight up. It's actually the first, well, first podcast. Yeah, I don't do too much. I'll be I'll be secluded, bro. I don't I don't rock with a lot of people. Yeah. One of my real good buddies has a podcast. He asked me, and I was like, "Nah, no interviews." I think one or one other interview, two other interviews, bro. In my whole career, nice. I don't do too much. I'll be chilling. I appreciate it because <laughs> you're you, bro. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I need guests to make a show. <laughs> I can't just sit here and talk to talk to my girlfriend. <laughs> You probably could, man. You're just going to talk about some shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's too shy. She's... Oh, yeah. We could call her. I got this thing. You can make cell phone calls through the pa- through the, in the Pro Tools. Oh, shit. They can, hear, they can hear us, and we can hear them, and it's all on two tracks. Oh, wow. So it's basically like I an haven't aux, used it yet. Right? It's an aux, but it has a microphone on it. But it has line in, and then... Oh. That goes to the phone microphone. Mm-hmm. And then this one goes to the phone receiver. 
Right. Or the front earpiece. How do you do that? No, like this goes in like that. And then oh, one goes in and out, and then they can hear you over the mic and yeah, shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's tight. I've yet to use it, though. Yeah, I guess I had to re-solder it to get it to work right. Oh, where? Because they sent it to me, and it was not set up right. Oh, that sucks. So I got a call. I can call, uh, make some uh, some calls. Some crank calls <laughs> with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Now that's, yeah, I think you got to... We gotta talk to her. She lives. She where'd she live, bro? Your oh girlfriend. My girlfriend. She lives in that room right there. Oh, with me here. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> why you gotta call it? Like, <laughs> no, I'm saying. No. <laughs> she lives in my lap, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's she funny. Lives in my lap. <laughs> hmm. My bad. <laughs> no, she's at work. She works up. She's the head of marketing at American Apparel. Damn, for real? Tell her I want to do a deal. <laughs> That's what everybody <laughs> says. <laughs> yeah. No, I tell her I want to do a branding deal. She just like gave her, I don't know what they call it. It's all very corporate. But she just got Snoop Dogg on some, to some campaign. Oh, word. That's so tight. going to work with Snoop. That's tight. Tell her I got some other big artists that she can work with, bro. Let's get a check. Like I work with, I work with the guy from uh, the just the same thing she does for fucking Jordan, and he's a pretty cool guy. Um, so I'll drop a proposal and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'll show her some numbers and everything, hmm. and it'll make sense. Yeah, I'm a really smart guy, bro. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> doubting you there at all. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> you could, all right. <laughs> you do a pro forma <laughs> budget. Right. Real easy, real quick. Like <laughs> pitch deck. Yeah, all of that. All man. the graphs. It'd be like box and whisker plots. Yeah, infographics and shit. <laughs> <laughs> all of that shit, man. Yeah. Uh, fuck it, got the Venn uh, diagrams. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One nose, <though>. though. <laughs> What's the shit? Uh, the fucking. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. The thing, man, we do the fucking slideshow. A PowerPoint? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's what she does. She does is like meetings, like corporate meetings. And I sent her, I always make fun of her because she's super corporate. She's like fight club when, <laughs> when he has to go to his <laughs> fucking corporate job and they wear, like, sit in his cubicle. So wait, does she smoke weed? Uh, yeah. All word. Damn, yeah, you just smokes. out of here, bro. You ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> you just, just threw her out LA. there like that, man. This is L.A. I mean, no, I mean, look, that company used to be owned by Dove Charney. So oh. he did a lot worse than smoking yeah, weed. Yeah. So they don't care. No, they all go out and drink <laughs> and they go on these company trips to uh, everywhere. <laughs> and they all get wasted and get in fights and... Yeah, most most people that work corporate jobs always. I think that's where Fight Club came from, bro. I think that was the whole thing, bro. That was yeah. the whole premise behind it. It's like because he's all pent up. Yeah, you're all pent up. You're sitting his job. That's why everybody hates Monday, bro. It's like you're you're dragging yourself through Monday or dragging yourself through the week. By Tuesday, you're like, damn, it's been a long week. Yeah, you got to fucking escape on Wednesday, Hump Day. Got to get over the hump. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. You got to motherfucking get it out some some way, somehow, man. That's why I'm glad I make music. I'm doing what I love. I can't call it work, bro. I work for myself. I do what I want to do when I want to do that shit, dog. Yeah. I couldn't imagine being stressed out by somebody else's timeline or deadline. Kiss my ass with that shit. Yeah. I mean, unless, like, it's a movie or something if I'm working in a movie, but I still love making music, so it's like, it's cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just have to do it, you know, in a timely manner. <laughs> <laughs> You know, especially when, when a motherfucker cutting the check. If they cutting the check and it's a nice check, then I was like, all right, I'll pick up the pace. But any other time, uh, you can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna have to wait. Yeah. Right? You know yeah. But it'd be cool though, because most of the time it's already done. Like the music is already done. So I was just like, here, take this, take this. Or I got people, or I got buddies. Hey, take this, take they shit. And deal with him. He's over there. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't imagine being. Brian had a job in maybe about 17 years, bro. Wait, how old is my son? 
13. So about 15, 15 years, 15, 16 years, bro. I haven't had a job. Like, yeah. I haven't had to work for nobody else. I was like, fuck. And even before that, I was like... You're, you're lucky. <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. Man, I just was like, yo, I just, I just couldn't do it, man. I just, I hate it when motherfuckers talk to me crazy and shit. And it's like, you know, that one dude that's got to be a power, you know, he's got to be a dick because he got his little, he got a little bit of power, his ego getting away. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I hate that guy. Nobody likes that guy. You know what I'm saying? But I always see like the, the, the vulnerability in that guy. And then I start feeling bad for him. It's like, oh, man, he's only overcompensating because he's really like weak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, that movie Office Space. Yeah. Yeah, I centered this. I was looking for it. Ten more tricks to appear smart in meetings. They're all sarcastic. <laughs> Turn multi-word phrases into acronyms. One person says, we really need a product requirements document for that. The other person says, yeah, you mean a PRD? <laughs> <laughs> Put sticky notes all over your laptop. Make sure your presentation has a giant useless appendix. Check out my appendix. <laughs> <laughs> dumb corporate shit. It's like, yeah. Everyone just take, get, takes their salary, keeps their mouth shut a little bit. <laughs> Let's wrap it up, man. Thanks for doing it again. Man, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I hope you get your uh, my man's studio. Yeah, man, I think I'm going downtown, man. Making my way downtown, walking fast, blessing. You got to pay a royalty for that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it was an interpolation, so it's like it's cheaper. <laughs> as soon as this, this one comes out, I'll get a cease and desist from your people. <laughs> like yo, hey, now you gonna get a, 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 a invoice? <laughs> invoice. <laughs> like, hey, hey, you gonna pay for that? <laughs> that is crazy, bro. You know what? They start doing that on Instagram. You put up music that ain't yours. Mm -hmm. They take that shit down. You get flagged for copyright. So now you got to start getting licensing through fucking uh, Instagram. You got to you got to license music on Instagram. Wait, so they like when you send it to TuneCore or whatever, then they send it to. Or you have to pay. They're like, you can keep this up if you pay. No, on Instagram. Yeah, they take that shit down. Or they just they just delete it unless you got a license for it. Yeah. Like you got to have a license for it to put it on Instagram. Because on YouTube, I know they, as soon as they catch it, they reroute the royalties back to whoever. Yeah, no, nah, they don't do that. They take that shit down. They block my shit. So they block my own music for me. It was registered. Yeah, that happened to me on, on a music video. Yeah, it's like, wait, this is my song. And they're like, can you prove it? Like, motherfucker, you see the email? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see the email address that you just emailed me? It says official <laughs> Mega Man. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah. It's, it's crazy, man. So, because they want to send it to your, yeah, they don't know the account is connected to your publishing. Well, I get it, but shit. I mean, my name, my full name is in there yeah. on both sides, on the publishing and on fucking YouTube. It's like you ask my full name, my fucking birthday. Like, you don't see that shit the same, like on fucking, like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, what happened to me was on, on the Covered in Gold video, which has, I, I think, over 30,000 hits on it. They rerouted it to the different distributor that was, that was collecting royalties instead of to my YouTube account. I left that distributor, but then they, they wouldn't change it, even though you know it's my face and my wow. name on the video. Because you don't necessarily own your own music anyways. Right. Yeah, it could belong to a label. Yep, yep. Well, that's what I told them. I was like, yo, look, check it out. Like, this is my shit. <laughs> like, here's my rosy sheets. Like, here you go, man. It's me. He's like, all right. Collectively, through all my music, through all my songs and shit, like, it's a whole bunch of different posts. I don't have a single video posted. Like, I don't have any music videos posted on YouTube. It's crazy, right? One, and I'm not, it's not even, it's like just a random song and shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with my with my homie, and I'm just on the hook, and so it's like uh, 
my fucking uh, <laughs> that shit. And then it's like my songs that are like famous from TV and shit, like millions and millions and millions and millions of views. You know what I'm saying? I've, I haven't received a single dollar from none of that shit, bro, because it's so broken up and spread all over the place. Like there's 60,000 over there, 300,000 over there, 10,000 right there, 5,000 over here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? A quarter of a million over here, half a million over there. Like, it's just crazy as hell. Like, it's like a bunch of results and shit. So Who scoops that up for you? Oh, the nobody. PR? Nobody. No? Nobody? For, for, for YouTube? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't gotten a check. Mm. But I, I don't have it published like that. I'm not published through them. You know what I'm saying? I'm published to licensing people. Yeah. B- BMI. No. Or no? That's just PRO. But not like uh, fucking in the groove. Oh, right. That music. You know what I'm saying? So they they get it, apparently, probably. But I should. Yeah, they get it if it's on YouTube. Yeah, but they I should get my YouTube because they don't have it up. I put it on YouTube. And they don't even have it on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they get the iTunes. I mean, we share the iTunes and shit like that Like when it comes in. But yeah, man. I'm going to hit this young Uber. Knock yourself out. All right. Peace out. Yeah, that's fun, man. You've been listening to the Cameron Adair podcast made by me, Cameron Adair. Thanks to Mega. You can find him on Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, everywhere at, at just Mega. This show is listener supported at patreon.com forward slash Cameron underscore Adair. You can also support the show by leaving a review on iTunes. Links to both of those, as well as a link to leave a message for the show, are in the notes. Thanks for listening.